And that's true. In fact, it's true for most countries that aren't called the United States of America, where 90% of all F5 tornadoes ever recorded took place. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to deadly natural phenomena. Last week a tornado ripped through Nashville and it got me thinking about how America is very extreme when it comes to some of these natural phenomena in a way that Britain isn't. And for anybody who's looking to move to the United States, it's good to keep these things in mind. Just just keep in mind they are rare, right? So the, it's not like a Roland Emmerich movie every day in this country, but it is pretty staggering how Mother Nature can be quite a bit more overbearing in the United States. And if you think this video is just going to be Lawrence moaning about the snow again, you would be incorrect because over half of the entries on this list are not even weather related. Well, actually one might be with a technicality. And so without further ado, let's take a look at five deadly natural phenomena that America has that Britain doesn't. Yes, earthquakes, and there is a reason that I specified magnitude 7, because Britain has never had one. In fact, the worst it's ever had was a 6.1 magnitude earthquake, and that didn't kill anybody. In Britain, that's sort of par for the course. Deaths as a result of an earthquake are incredibly rare. The only earthquake I remember living through in Britain was one that emanated from the Lincolnshire town of Market Raisin, and as I recall, the extent of the damage that day was a fallen patio set. But magnitude 7 earthquakes, or above, are not just these sort of fictional events that are reserved for films like the imaginatively titled Earthquake. These have actually happened in American history. In fact, one happened just last year in California. I remember all of these famous people on social media posting pictures and videos of their swimming pools swaying from side to side and the dogs looking confused. And it's not really surprising that this happened in California because California is sort of the capital of America's most deadly earthquakes. Indeed, the nation's most deadly earthquake occurred in 1906 in San Francisco when a frankly astonishing 3,000 people perished amid a 7.9 magnitude earthquake. Now, since that deadly earthquake in San Francisco, California has, of course, endured some terrible earthquakes in the century that has passed. It's also waiting, of course, for the so-called big one, which, you know, some people think is inevitable. Either way, once you get past all of these quakes and shakes, I am assured that California truly is the golden state. That is, once you've also got past these... We saw it in Australia at the beginning of this year, the bushfires that engulfed that country. We see them, of course, every single year in the United States. Specifically, from a new standpoint, you tend to see them in California. But I've seen at least smoke from wildfires in Utah and Idaho, so it's not just a California issue. That just happens to be where some of the deadlier wildfires occur in the US, but not the deadliest of all time. That very unwanted record goes not to California or Utah or Idaho, but to Wisconsin. That's right, the Peshtigo fire of 1871 killed upward of 1,500 people, and there's a weird reason that you might not have heard of it. It may have burned through 1.2 million acres and been the deadliest wildfire in US history, but due to a stunning coincidence, it was largely buried in the newspapers of the day, where it was overshadowed by another fire that broke out that day, a fire that history will remember as the Great Chicago Fire. And the Great Chicago Fire also overshadowed the Great Michigan Fire. It's like how John F. Kennedy's death overshadowed that of C.S. Lewis and Aldous Huxley. What are the chances? Well, for decades, some theorised that all of the fires were caused by the very same thing, that being debris falling to Earth from a missing comet. But in recent times, scientists have ruined that theory by pointing out that actually to the touch, comet debris is actually cold and would probably extinguish the fire. So it, it was aliens. Meanwhile, people very rarely die in wildfires in Britain, if at all, though wildfires do indeed exist there. The same cannot be said of our next entry. Now we're getting into the kind of phenomena that I've not seen with my own eyes, unless you include 1997's Volcano or 1997's Dante's Peak. What are the chances that two very similar disaster movies would come out in the same year? Let's ask 1998's Armageddon and 1998's Deep Impact. But the truth of the matter is volcano eruptions in the United States are not just works of fiction. You may recall recently that there was a volcano eruption in Hawaii and don't get me started on Mount St. Helens. Actually do, because that represents the deadliest eruption 
in US history. In 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted, killing 57 people. And over the course of the next decade, it would see more and more eruptions. And this this isn't surprising, because if you look at a map of the west coast of the United States, or just the west coast of the Americas in general, look at all those active volcanoes. That's where they sit. I, I blame Pangaea for breaking up, because it's enough to put me off moving to the Pacific coast. And if one of those blows, not even Pierce Brosnan can help me. Now, having looked at a map of all of the active volcanoes in the United States, here are all of the active volcanoes in Britain. That's right, there are precisely no active volcanoes in the entirety of Britain. So Britain is thankfully unlikely to match the death toll at Mount St. Helens. Unfortunately, our next entry far surpasses it. So to use language that you're more likely to hear in this, my adoptive country, Category 5 hurricanes are like totally the worst. Literally true, the deadliest natural disaster in American history was the Great Storm of 1900. Striking Galveston, Texas, it is believed to have killed between 6,000 and 12,000 Americans. But this was a Category 4 storm. The deadliest Category 5 storm was the Okeechobee Storm of 1928, which killed 2,500 Americans and 1,600 others elsewhere. In recent times you probably remember Hurricane Katrina which was also a Category 5 storm and of course led to thousands of fatalities in New Orleans and some of the surrounding areas and states as well. And if you're watching this from Britain you might be thinking what we don't have hurricanes in Britain and deadly ones at that. Well the truth is people have died as a result of hurricanes in Britain just not Category 5 hurricanes and that's because in Britain there has never been a Category 5 hurricane on record and that includes the most most famous storm in living memory, that would be the Great Storm of 1987, which nonetheless did kill 18 people and 15 million trees. And all this after the weatherman Michael Fish reported that there wasn't going to be a hurricane, so we weren't prepared. Thankfully it happened at night, so most people were asleep in their soft beds. The same can't be said for the trees, which ironically did provide material for some of the bed frames. No, in Britain, hurricanes are sort of rare. We usually get what they refer to as the tail end of the hurricane. And speaking of tails... Thankfully, unless you include 1996's Twister, I've never seen a tornado with my own eyes, but if I did, I'd absolutely <laughs> myself. At this point in my life, perhaps it's just luck that I haven't seen one, because to say that we don't have them in Britain would be a complete lie. Tornadoes are actually quite numerous in the British Isles, but there's a big difference between the tornadoes that we get in Britain and the tornadoes that we get in the United States of America. Firstly, the UK has not recorded a tornado-related fatality since 1931, and before the 20th century you'd have to go back to 1558 and then 1091. Historically, around only 12 people have been killed by tornadoes in Britain. And that's because British tornadoes just aren't very powerful. The one that ripped through London in 1091 is believed not only to be the oldest known tornado in British history, but possibly the strongest. They theorise that it might have been a a Category 4 tornado, suggesting that anything above that, aka an F5 tornado, has never made landfall in Britain. And that's true, in fact it's true for most countries that aren't called the United States of America, where 90% of all F5 tornadoes ever recorded took place. Now 37% of those took place in either Oklahoma, Kansas or Texas. You would expect that they're in the Great Plains. But surprisingly the Great Plains did not play host to the deadliest tornado in US history. That would go to the tri-state area of Indiana, Illinois and Missouri. That 1925 twister killed 58 times the UK's all-time total. If you're sitting at home and doing the maths on that, stop right now because I'm just I'm just going to tell you the death toll was 698. It's by far the biggest, but as we are reminded by that tornado that ripped through Nashville last week, itself an incident that beats the UK's all-time record. We are reminded once again of the destructive power of American tornadoes, and my thoughts go to the people recovering from that incident. In the meantime, for anybody that's looking to move to the United States, I hope this video hasn't put you off. For the most part, you won't see any of this, you know, and 
unless you live in California. I'm joking, you'll be fine. I just wanted to make you aware of these things and to remind my American viewers that Mother Nature just seems to have it in for you. As for me, doing this video has reminded me that I can live with the odd blizzard and that I do miss British weather. That's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below and I'll be very interested to hear this if you've experienced firsthand any of these phenomena. In the meantime, don't forget to follow me on Twitter where I talk about this kind of thing. You know, not, not just natural disasters, but the, sort of the, the British versus American thing, basically. You can follow me at Lost in the Pond US and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. Finally, a volcano sized thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Anybody that does so will get access to my secret live stream and anybody who pledges five dollars or more a month will get access to not only that but my secret podcast and more. Until next time, check your alerts for my next video, not for a tornado. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond.